Well, what's up everyone? I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing some more battles in the Fossil Cup. This time, instead of the Triple Rock team, I'm running a Triple Water and Flying team. And of course, against Lantern, this team is going to instantly lose. But I got super lucky on the day that I tried this team out. I did six full sets, and I think it was on the Friday before Go Battle Day, and I only saw one Lantern. So, apart from that one game, Every other game I had a lot of play with this team and actually this team was super successful for me which I just could not believe because on paper you look at it and you think how the heck does this team do well but honestly this team really fits well against the meta as long as you don't see lantern you might be thinking well what about registeel registeel has got zap cannon zap cannon is gonna destroy all three pokemon well the thing is shadow gyarados can just two shield that matchup and win it comfortably and obviously lock-ons don't do much damage so you come out of that matchup with almost a full health shadow gyarados and two other pokemon in the back and a lot of the time Registeel is on the lead and they stay in because they think it's a good matchup but it's actually not and then also most of the time their back two Pokemon are kind of weak to the water flying type so those matchups are usually fairly comfortable. One other thing that I want to mention quickly before we go into the question of the day is that you may have noticed that I'm actually running Hydro Pump on my Pelipper and that wasn't intentional. I actually used Pelipper a while ago for a Team Rocket challenge where I used Blizzard, and Blizzard has absolutely no play in this meta, but I used a bunch of TMs and it kept on flicking between Hydro Pump and Blizzard until I ran out of TMs, so I wasn't able to get Hurricane. You will see that Hydro Pump actually came in handy in a few scenarios because obviously it does a lot more damage than Weather Ball, but yeah, like you do want to run Hurricane on your Pelipper and it would have made a lot of the matchups more comfortable, especially against like Jellicent and Ferrothorn because both of those Pokemon are kind of tricky to deal with with this team. But yeah, that's why I'm running Hydro Pump. It wasn't out of choice, it was because I had no TMs. But with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. So sort of relating to my Pelipper, what is the weirdest moveset you've ever ran on a Pokemon? Maybe because you ran out of TMs and just wanted to use it anyway, or maybe you just wanted to use a weird move set that people weren't really going to expect. Let me know in the comment section and maybe you'll get a shout out in my next video. But with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so into the first battle we lead into a Jellicent, so not the most ideal lead. Jellicent is kind of tricky to deal with actually with this team and they switch into a Registeel and now I've got Hydro Pump. Can I land a Hydro Pump against a Registeel with the Pelipper? No, they shield, what the heck, what? <laughs> I did not expect them to shield that. Honestly, like I did not believe that they just shielded from a Pelipper, but honestly, like that kind of works out fine as well, to be honest, like I'm gonna come in with the Gyarados, get to an Aquatel just before they get to a Zac Cannon and debuff me. And if this lands, which it does, we should hopefully be able to farm down. I know they are going to throw a Zap Cannon here, but hopefully these debuffed waterfalls can take out the Registeel. And it looks like they would have been able to, but my opponent switches out, which is a good play. They don't want to get completely farmed down there. And they switch into the Jellicent, caught a Crunch, which is probably not the most ideal thing for them. My opponent goes for a Bubble Beam here. And then I'm going to go for an Aerial Ace here. Unfortunately, I lose CMP to this Jellicent. They go for a Shadow Ball this time. It does a lot of damage, but that is fine. Mantine's real job here on the team is just to soak up a lot of damage. It is quite bulky. It's actually got the exact same stats as Skarmory. And my opponent makes a brilliant catch here to get the Aerial Ace. And now I am Energy Dry. I'm going to switch into the Gyarados. And we should be able to tank any move from Swampert. Assuming that they're not running Sludge Wave, they go for the Hydro Cannon, which is fine. I'm going to shield up this next move, and then I should be able to get to a charge move, hopefully. And this will get their shield. I'm actually going for a Crunch, so hopefully I can get a debuff here. And I get the shield, and I get the debuff. And as well, it looks like my opponent kind of lagged there, so I get an extra Waterfall through, which is ideal. And now I'm able to Wing Attack farm them down, although if... They didn't lag there, then I would have still got to the Bubble Beam just before they got to a move. So GG's to that opponent. Into the next game, we lead into a Melmetal, so not a very good lead. But the fortunate thing is that most Melmetals are actually running Thunderbolt. Which might seem worse, but it's actually better because it takes them longer to get to a charge move. Meaning that we have a bit more play than if it was with Rock Slide. 
And my opponent here is going to get to another charge move. I don't want a double shield, so I'm actually going to come in with Pelipper. Hopefully I can farm down, and I'm just barely able to before they get to another Thunderbolt, which is perfect. They come in with Jellicent. Now here is a matchup where it would be a lot better if I had the Hurricane. And we land the Hydro Pump. It actually does a solid amount of damage, but Hurricane would have obviously been a lot better for us. I'm going to go for an Aerial Ace against this Ludicolo here. And we land it, and it does a decent chunk, but Aerial Ace is a pretty rubbish move. And as well, uh, Mantine's fairly bulky, so yeah, it doesn't do much damage at all. They go for an Ice Beam here. I'm going for the Aerial Ace. Unfortunately, we lose CMP again against this Jellison, but my opponent goes for a Bubble Beam, so that is perfect. I'm going to go for the Aerial Ace here, and this is now debuffed, but we get a shield from them. I'm going to come in with Pelipper, force them to throw a Shadow Ball, and hopefully I can get to another charge move with the Mantine here. This is going to be super close and I'm able to get to the Aerial Ace. This is a rubbish move, but does it KO? Yes, it does. And we're able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent. Really close game there. Into the next game, we're leading Gyarados into another Gyarados. So I'm actually going to switch out instantly. Well, not instantly. I wanted to see what move they had. And they had Waterfall as well. So that is kind of all right for us. Now, they come in with a Registeel, but they let us get to a charge move because they stayed in with Gyarados. And we land the Hydro Pump, and that actually does a, disappoint, a disappointing amount of damage, if I'm honest. But I'm actually going to shield this up and see if I can flip switch advantage. I should just barely be able to get to another Hydro Pump here. The Weather Ball would not KO from this range because we are debuffed, and I don't think it would KO anyway. We land the Hydro Pump, and now my opponent comes back in with the Gyarados. I'm going to let this go through. And then I'm going to switch into the Mantine here, and this should be a good matchup for us. I'm going to go for a Bubble Beam, actually, because I want to debuff their attack before they throw a move. My opponent actually switches out into a Lucario. So this is kind of looking all right for us now, because we obviously have the double water flying types to take on Lucario. My opponent is going to throw a move here. I'm going to let this go through. It is a Shadow Ball. It doesn't even take us out. I'm going to... Force them to throw another move here, otherwise I would have got to another charge move. And now I can come in with the Gyarados here, and we should be in a good position. I'm actually going to switch to catch a Power Up Punch. Pretty unnecessary, I think, because obviously Power Up Punch doesn't do too much damage to a Water and Flying type Pokemon. But I'm going to shield this up here against the Gyarados, and I can commit to a full Waterfall farm down against both the Gyarados and the Lucario, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent. Now into the next game, we lead into an S Cavalier, so a good lead for us. My opponent switches into Pelipper, so I stay in for a while, and then I'm going to switch into the Mantine here. The thing is, it doesn't really matter if we maintain switch advantage or not so i'm going to come in with the mantine here go for a charge move and either get a shield or do a decent amount of damage we do get the shield which is fine and now my opponent is going to throw a move i'm going to let this go through mantine has soaked up the energy from this pelipper so that is perfectly fine with me. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to commit to one shield and then fully farm down this Pelipper. Unfortunately, they bait me with a Weather Ball. They're able to get to another move, but this is obviously, obviously just another Weather Ball. So that is perfectly fine. I'm able to farm them down. They come in with S Cavalier. I'm going straight for the Hydro Pump here. And boom, we take out the S Cavalier. And they have a Ferrothorn in the back. So this is not ideal. This is certainly where Hurricane would be more beneficial. But I'm going to go for the Weather Ball here, and it's actually a CMP tie with the Power Whip. So that is perfect. That's the most optimal scenario there. So that is good. I'm going for a Crunch here. Unfortunately, they don't throw on the fourth Bullet Seed. So they get an extra Bullet Seed through. And now they're able to deny me here. So they should be one away from the back-to-back -back Power Whips. So I'm going to go for one more Waterfall, go for an Aquatel, and even though this is resisted, it should just barely take out the Ferrothorn, and I'm able to win that game. So GG's to that opponent. Into the next game, we lead Gyarados into Registeel. Now this is exactly where we want to see the Registeel, and actually most of the time I saw Registeel in the lead, and I actually didn't include a lot of the battles because they were all very similar. But we get a shield against the Registeel, they throw there, and I actually get a Waterfall through. They go for the Zap Cannon, of course, we shield it up, and then we're going to go for five Waterfalls and then throw another Aqua Tail here. And now this won't KO, but it should put them in range where I can easily farm them down, and I could probably even switch into Pelipper here, and I'm going to. They come in with the Jellicent, so not ideal because, once again, I do not have the Hurricane. 
but that's going to be fine. We take the Shadow Ball. I'm going for the Hydro Pump here. Even though this is resisted, it will do a lot of damage, and my opponent actually shields up, which is fine, and they throw straight away as well. This is probably just a Bubble Beam, and it is, so I'm going to be able to just barely get to the Weather Ball here for some chip damage against the Jellison. And now I'm going to come in with Gyarados and then farm up and then switch to catch a move on my Mantine. And once again, Mantine being the damage sponge that it is, it takes that fairly comfortably. And I'm able to get to a charge move just before the Jellicent throws another move. So that is perfect. We take out the Jellicent. They come in with Registeel. They realize they're going to get farmed down. So they switch out into the Pelipper here. And I'm going to be able to land this Aerial Ace. Once again, Aerial Ace, an awful move. I'm sure King IV will tell you that if you ask him and we get taken out there but I'm able to get to a crunch this is easily going to take out this Pelipper and then I should be able to farm down the Registeel with one more waterfall and I'm able to take that game so GG's to that opponent and into the next game we lead Gyarados into Berserker so this is a fairly fine lead and they switch into Azumarill which I didn't see too often in this cup I'm going to switch here to try and catch a play rough once again Mantine's only job here is to soak up the damage from this Azumarill. This must be an XL Azumarill because that play rough did hardly anything to Mantine. I know Mantine is pretty bulky, but still. They go for another play rough and I should be able to get to an Aerial Ace before they get to a final play rough to take me out. And this Aerial Ace is going to do absolutely nothing, but that is fine. And my opponent gets a charge move here and that's fine. I'm going to let Mantine go down. Once again, I'm not too fussed about switch advantage because all three Pokemon have the exact same typing. It doesn't, doesn't matter too much. So I'm going for an Aquatel here. It is resisted, but I mean, I can only throw resisted moves. I'm going to go for a Crunch because it does slightly more damage. And as well, there is a chance for the defense drop. And we get it. And my opponent is staying in trying to get to a charge move. I'm just going to shield this up. It is a Moonblast. It's a good shield and they come back in with the Berserker. I was tempted to go for a Hydro Pump, but honestly, Berserker is very squishy, so they probably shield up everything anyway. I'm going to go for the Weather Ball here and this might even get the second shield and it does. And at this point, I'm thinking I probably do survive a foul play. So I let it go through and I do survive. I get to another Weather Ball and this will do a lot of damage to the Berserker. And I'm going to switch into Gyarados. They get to another charge move. I can safely shield this up. The waterfall went through and I'll have an Aquatel ready to throw into the Tapu Fini. And that is going to take them out. So GG's to that opponent. A very uh, interesting team composition there. And unfortunately we got the stupid glitch where our win doesn't actually count for anything. But I don't think it counts as a loss either. I think the battle kind of just disappears as if it didn't happen. So not ideal, but also uh, it didn't happen to me very often. So that's at least something I've seen like other people saying that's happening basically every other game, which is awful. So here we led into another Registeel and we can just stay in, go for Arquitels. Going for five before I throw the second one. And once again, this shouldn't quite take them out. So actually, no, they didn't shield the first one, so that would have taken them out. But I'm going to shield this up, and now I should be able to farm them down. I'm actually going to switch into the Pelipper once again, and once again, I'm met with Jellicent. So a pretty common pairing to have Registeel in the lead and Jellicent in the back. And once again, it would have been a lot better if we had the Hurricane. This time, I'm actually just going to go for a Weather Ball. Either we land the Hydro Pump, and it doesn't really do much, or we get a shield. And yeah, like so I thought I might as well just go for the... Weather ball, and then also it sort of forces them to throw early because they might think that I do have Hurricane, which I mean I should have, but bloody TMs are a nightmare. <laughs> and I'm going to go for the Aquatail here, and this should take them out from this range. And we actually get a shield. I'm going to switch into the Mantine here and tank the Shadow Ball. Once again, Mantine just being a damage sponge. They come in with Lucario, and that is perfect. I'm going to get to an Aerial Ace. This isn't even enough for a Shadow Ball. Aerial Ace, rubbish move, it's not going to do that much damage to Lucario, but I should be able to force them to throw another move here, and actually I think I can probably still tank this as well, and I do tank it, 
and we leave them with just like a few HP. I can farm down with the waterfall here and am I going to be able to get to another charge move against the Jellicent? Actually, I forced them to throw early. I didn't want them to catch it on the Registeel and then somehow get to a Shadow Ball. So they go for a Bubble Beam and I can just waterfall farm down the Registeel as well. So GG's to that opponent. Another very close game. And into the next game, we lead into yet another Registeel. Like I said, I saw Registeel in the lead so often. I think probably like 60% of my games were just Registeel in the lead. So you're going to see some pretty repetitive lead matchups here where I just shield up and then go for five waterfalls and then go for the move here. We throw just before they get to another charge move. And actually, my opponent shields, which is perfect. And yeah, I'm gonna shield this up and I'm actually gonna stay in this time and then wait to see what they bring in. They bring in Ludicolo, so I switch into a Mantine here. They're actually staying in, which is quite surprising. I wonder what they have in the back. And they have a Shadow Swampert, so that's why they were staying in. We absolutely wall Swampert with all three Pokemon here. Obviously, we don't have any shields anymore, and we are at a health disadvantage. So the Swampert is gonna be able to take out my Mantine, but I should be able to waterfall, farm it down, and then get to a crunch against the Ludicolo. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Waterfall, farm it down. I have a crunch now against this Ludicolo. This will do a lot of damage, and then I'm gonna switch into the Pelipper and go for a wing attack farm down, and I'm able to take it out there. So GG's to that opponent. Into the next game, we lead Gyarados into yet another Registeel. What a surprise. And we're just going to play it out exactly the same. Sorry if these lead matchups are very repetitive, but this is just to show you that this team was really strong because of how common Registeel is in the lead. So once again, they go for the Zap Cannon, and then I'm going to go for an Arcatel just before they get to another Zap Cannon. And once again, this won't KO. And they actually double shield, which is the most ideal thing for me because I'm still going to be able to win this matchup anyway. They actually switch into Pelipper. So I'm going to farm up to an Arquitel and then switch into the Mantine here. And once again, we're just going to tank this energy on the Mantine comfortably. We get to an Aerial Ace as well, which is perfect. And then my opponent is not going to be able to farm me down. So they're going to have to throw a Weather Ball eventually. So this weather ball does take us out and I'm going to come in with Pelipper. I don't think they'll be able to get to a hurricane. So hopefully this is just a weather ball from this Pelipper. And it is, so that is perfect. I'm going to be able to farm them down nearly, well not quite. But I go for a hydro pump here against this Jellicent. And things are kind of looking a bit dodgy. I don't quite have the crunch ready. But this Jellicent is farming up a lot of energy. So I'm going to go for the weather ball here. And then instantly switch into Gyarados to throw the Aquatel. Before the Jellicent can even throw a charge move. And that is going to win me the game here. Because all they've got is two Pokemon with no energy. And we're able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Uh, I see what they were trying to do. They were trying to get 100 energy on the Jellicent and then they would have had a move for the Gyarados. But unfortunately, I was able to snipe them with my Gyarados there. So leading into a Ferrothorn. So this is kind of tricky for me, but they switch out eventually into Jellicent. And once again, we have Hydro Pump. So things are not looking great for us. We do get the shield, which is kind of good, but at the same time, like, doesn't really make a difference. They go for the Shadow Ball, it doesn't KO, so I'm able to get to a Weather Ball here, and this will do a little bit of chip damage, not a lot, but yeah, like we, there's not much we can do. Gonna come in with Gyarados, and then just blindly swap into the Mantine here. We catch another Shadow Ball, which is perfect, and yeah, um, seeing that the first Shadow Ball didn't do that much damage, hopefully we can tank it, but we're not able to, and then that's a mistake there. Unfortunately, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to win this game. This Ferrothorn is still very healthy. And my opponent is actually going to come in with Lucario. So maybe we've still got some play. Hopefully this Aquatel is enough to take out the Lucario. And it is. But this Ferrothorn is absolutely loaded. So there's no point shielding this. They're going to get to two Power Whips before I can get to two Crunches. Or even a Crunch and an Aquatel. So... Unfortunately, we lose that game. Ferrothorn and Jellicent together, very strong against this team, especially when I don't have the Hurricane on the Pelipper. 
But into this game, my opponent goes for an acid spray here. I'm going to go for the weather ball here and this won't KO, but hopefully I should be able to wing attack farm them down before they get to another move. And I am just barely able to. I've got a hydro pump loaded. This will do absolutely nothing against Ludicolo because it double resists the water typing, but they don't know we're running hydro pump, so they shield it up anyway. So that was kind of the thing with hydro pump is that we, a lot of the time we got shield anyway, so it wasn't the worst thing ever but certainly when shields were down um, hydro pump was not the best for me I'm gonna let this charge move go through and they bait a power punch so that is perfect for me I'm gonna go for the aerial ace here and we land it I'm gonna switch into Gyarados and I'm able to waterfall farm them down and I'm able to waterfall farm down the Ludicolo as well so GG's to that opponent there and into the next game we lead into a Pelipper so I'm going to switch into my own Pelipper here and I am going to shield this up and it is just a weather ball bait which is unfortunate. I'm going to go for my own weather ball bait as well because there's not really any point me throwing a hydro pump because it is resisted. I'm going to go for another weather ball here just before they throw and I actually get a second shield so that was kind of strange but it looks like my opponent is farming up extra energy so that's fine by me. I'm going to let this move go through now and they do go for the hurricane so hopefully I should be able to wing attack farm down this Pelipper before they get to another hurricane and I'm able to. They come in with the S Cavalier. I'm going for an aerial ace and then I'm probably going to switch into the Gyarados and that's exactly what I do. They're staying in with the S Cavalier. I am going to shield this up it's just a drill run which is unfortunate but it doesn't matter they've got a lucario and lucario is so squishy that this aquatel is going to take them out and boom we take out a lucario with the aquatel and we take that game so ggs to that opponent once again and just to show you that we went 5-0 in that set so this team was actually really strong uh, surprisingly strong and into the next game we lead into Jellicent so once again uh, kind of a tricky lead try to catch the shadow ball this time they don't throw straight away but they still throw the shadow ball anyway so that is perfectly fine with me I'm able to get to an aerial ace just before they get to another move or just before they throw another move aerial ace <laughs> doesn't do much but I'm gonna let this move go through once again as well and they go for the shadow ball so they take me out but that is fine I am going to come in here with the Gyarados and just commit to a waterfall farm down. Uh, I think I actually tried to throw the move there but it didn't register otherwise I would have won CMP so that's fine. They come in with Lucario, I'm going to go for the back to back Aquatails here and we should be able to take this game hopefully. So I land this second Aquatel here, switch into Pelipper and they should be in a range where I can take them out with the Weather Balls here. They go for a power punch, bait, that doesn't really matter. For some reason I throw straight away, which is uh, probably not the play, but I think I wanted enough health so that I could actually tank a Shadow Ball on the Pelipper. They come in with an Escav, and I'm farming up a lot of energy, and this is actually enough for a Mega Horn, and it is a Mega Horn, and then they catch the move on the Jellicent, so this is not ideal. Weather Ball takes out the Jettison from that range and I come in with the Gyarados and I'm just barely able to get to the Aquatel here. This should have been a CMP tie with the Drew Run I think and we're able to take that game. So super close game there but I'm just barely able to take it. And into the final battle of the video we lead into another Registeel. Is this going to be another routine win for the Gyarados? Here, just going straight Aquatel. We get to it just before they get to a Zap Cannon. They let it go through, which is perfect. I'm going to shield this up. They go for the Zap Cannon, of course. And then I'm going to go for another Aquatel just before they get to another charge move. We weren't going to be able to farm them down, which is unfortunate, but that's fine. And my opponent has a Lantern, so yeah. like <laughs> Finally, we see a Lantern, and we're going to be absolutely destroyed by this Lantern here. They shield up knowing that we're possibly weak to Lantern in the pack. I'm actually going to bring in the Mantine and just fully sacrifice it because yeah, um, we're going to need the shield for the Pelipper here. If we want any chance of winning this game, I am going to shield up and they go for the Thunderbolt. I'm thinking they've seen my whole team, they're probably going to shield up anything here because they know that Lantern is absolutely going to destroy me and they get to the move there. I'm going to go for another Weather Ball here and yeah. <laughs> Um, we lag here, but that's not going to make any difference at all. 
my opponent gets to the Thunderbolt and they're gonna just destroy me here. So I don't even know why I played out this matchup, but yeah, GG's to that opponent. Lantern, way too strong for this team. But that's gonna be it for this video. So if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And also don't forget to respond to the question of the day for a chance at a shout out in my next GBL video. And with that being said, let's get on to the shout outs from my previous GBL video. So firstly, we've got Small Atom who says the funniest glitch is when their Umbreon was up against a Giratina altered in the Open Ultra League. The opponent banked a move and then made a quick switch into Cresselia to throw the Moonblast which was banked. However, they could still see the Giratina so it assumed it was probably just a Dragon Claw or an Ancient Power. But then suddenly they get hit with the Moonblast and it even said Giratina used Moonblast. The best thing is that Giratina really did the attack animation to throw the Moonblast. The game almost costed them but it was worth it to see that stupid glitch. Saw a lot of people commenting similar stories to this so not the most unique glitch and it does seem to be a bit more common again recently but certainly a funny one. So next we've got Mao Zhang Getsu, um, sorry if I've butchered your name, but they mentioned that the funniest and at the same time most rage inducing glitch they encountered was the earthquake glitch which is where you hit the bubbles for the charge move and the charge move is never thrown and you're just stuck watching the world shake non-stop and yeah this is certainly a funny one, uh, I haven't seen it recently at all but certainly when I did see it <laughs> It was pretty funny, but also, yeah, very, very frustrating. And finally, we've got Valor9x7, who says, after a Hypno used a Fire Punch against them, the Fire Punch animation didn't go away for the rest of the battle, making it look like Hypno had its head on fire, which I've personally never seen that glitch, but I can imagine it's pretty funny. So yeah, that's why they get a shout out here. So that's going to be it for the shoutouts. Don't forget to respond to the question of the day for a chance at a shoutout in my next GBL video. Also, just before I end the video, I just want to mention that I did also attempt to use this team during Go Battle Day, but unfortunately it seemed like the Lanterns were out in full force. So this team just absolutely got destroyed on multiple occasions. Sure, I could win most of the matchups where Lantern wasn't present, but with Lantern on like two or three teams in every set, it kind of meant that I started to drop some elo. So I did make an adjustment to the team. I ran my new shiny Berserker that I just got in a lucky trade, so that was cool. And then, uh, yeah, I just kept in the Gyarados and the Pelipper, and it still worked fairly well. Finally got a charge TM to get rid of the Hydro Pump for Hurricane, and uh, yeah, that's how I got to the Veteran rank. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.